kernel. Um, quite a host or a Pandora's box of different types of effects on the outer edge of, of the scientific uh, community. In this remarkable series of video clips shot by Hutchison, we see what happens when he fine-tunes the electromagnetic frequencies aimed at target objects in his garage. subatomic level, I feel that there is a, a dimension shift activated by very conventional electrostatics, RF fields that I use, and Tesla waves that I use, that actually form a keyway that opens up another area of time and space that may activate the zero-point energy fields and interdimensional reactions, let's say, to gravitational waves and time waves, or chronons, if you wish. Perhaps we're dealing in chronons and gravitons, which are maybe particles, and somehow causing a distortion, which causes objects to simply break apart or pulsate in the center uh, of stainless steel bars and fall apart, or to become weightless. ice cream in a plastic cup. Seventy pound cannonball. interesting and also frustrating about his invention is that he's using a combination of Tesla coil and Van de Graaff to produce a very disruptive and lifting experiments which in one case for example uh, actually lifts a 19 pound bushing uh, toward the ceiling just from electromagnetic fields. Now when we analyze that we find that there's a um, position versus time graph that we can plot and also the velocity versus time but when we actually analyze the um, acceleration versus time it's uh, an increasing straight line. So we're forced as scientists to admit that we have a third derivative effect, which um, for my mind actually lends itself to a, a anomalous new force, which I call hyperforce, uh, because we have to take a derivative of that to finally get a flat straight line, a constantly increasing acceleration. So the Hutchinson effect has been used as a benchmark for a comparison to many other high voltage propulsion devices, electrogravity in other words. Now that we've witnessed the awesome potential of these revolutionary new energy sources, some interesting questions begin to surface. What are the consequences to the environment, to the very fabric of space-time itself, once we begin harnessing these little understood forces on a planetary scale? Remember the promise of nuclear energy? That electricity would be too cheap to meter? 
Are there downsides to tapping free energy that we may not be able to predict until it may be too late? We have effects which can get down now into the very fundamental thing that drives everything, the mind stuff, the connection of the mind to the body and everything. For example, if you were to generate extreme pulses, extreme powerful pulses of this so-called scalar potential stuff uh, with the hidden internal stuff, if you jerk that or hard enough, you jerk the normal smooth flow of time stream and what you really do is you snap the body loose from its mind connection you jerk the two loose from each other that's instantaneous death at every level every cell dies every germ dies every paramecium dies every virus dies the whole body dies so obviously if you're going to try to take uh, think of energy in those enormous amounts you're going to be extremely careful you can't do that just willy-nilly without risking terrible effects from it. So there are some limitations that will emerge on this technology. There is a danger, however, that you may have too much uh, zero-point energy and then, of course, these things would heat up and explode, which has happened a few times with these devices of mine. So, in essence, uh, it's an interesting technology to get involved in, but I notice that there's some precautions one needs to take if you're having too much drawing of, from the electromagnetic jitter of, of um, zero-point energy, you're going to get a, a minor meltdown. And I had to clean this area out here once because of a minor meltdown. Would a new energy source be dangerous, for example? I would, I would say, of course you have to respect it. I mean, it's energy, so therefore it's always potentially dangerous. It's double-edged. And I think it's, it would take a healthy respect. To, to investigate it. One should be cautious, and that's, that's very reasonable. I've heard some good things. I've heard there could be health effects. There could be good effects as well as the potential for detrimental effects. I think it's like anything else. It's energy. It could be used for good. It could be used for bad. It's up to us. Perhaps because of their traditional understanding of invisible forces like chi or ki, oriental cultures, especially the techno-enthusiastic Japanese, embrace the concept of free energy. Well-respected scientists like Sunichi Siki and Sehuji Inomata are receiving substantial government and industry support. Meanwhile, the Japanese, of course, are beginning to commercially develop various systems uh, for example, uh, a Japanese consortium funds the Pones and Fleshman work. Uh, the Japanese uh, Toshiba Corporation is working with Inamata, and various other corporations are coming together to develop free energy options. And of course, Japan has no vested interest in oil. They don't have any domestic source. So it's, it's in their best interest to be the first kid on the block uh, to make little gizmos that will replace our circuit breakers and internal combustion engines. To understand this machine, uh, you need, you know, mind change, paradigm shift in yourself, you know. So far, physics, ordinary science, consider only material world. But we should think another world as an unseen world. And we should recognize that unseen world and material world is connected, connected. You know, this energy comes from the other dimension. 